Devon Think is a powerful software for Mac users, especially qualitative researchers. It can store and organize tons of documents as well as reference materials that can be crucial to research projects. Yeah, it stores a lot of stuff. It's really very uh, well suited and designed for yeah. large data sets, qualitative data sets. So if you are someone who works with a lot of qualitative material, mm -hmm. text uh, especially, um, then Devon Think is probably a good option for you. Yes, it's a super, super powerful tool. But after you collect and store all these documents, the big question comes to mind, what do you do with it? Yeah, as researchers, you start collecting resources with a mission or an end goal in mind. You, it's not, the end goal is not to just hoard and have material. You want to write something about it. Yeah, exactly. So how do you go from the collecting and the storing the materials to achieve your final result, which is to write something, to create something with it, you're going to need a process, a process to both um, manage your collection as well as the use of those qualitative materials. And to help you to develop that process is exactly why we created Devon Think for Historians. And for the rest of this video, we're going to share with you how what we've created can help you create a process for your qualitative research. So my name is Ada and I am a systems and process efficiency expert. And I'm Avi Guile and I'm a historian. Um, and so that's why the two of us came together to yeah. create Devon Think for Historians. It's really um, a unique melding of, of two uh, really uh, unique and special skill sets uh, and cool people. I yeah, think. it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're often asked by potential students if this course will help them learn how to use Devon Think to improve their research process. Um, the answer is yes, and uh, we'll uh, explain a, a little bit of how in this video. So first, I, I just want to clarify that despite the course's name, it is applicable to a lot of um, qualitative research disciplines. So if you're not a historian, um, but you um, use some historical methods, say, as part of your uh, ethnography as an anthropologist or sociologist, um, or um, there's a historical component to um, your linguistics work, then maybe this uh, would be a good fit for you as well. Yeah. So the course, Devon Think for Historians, has two parts, the starting up guide and the super user guide. So the starting up guide really teaches you how to use Devon Think to construct a database. Um, it's accessible to absolute novices. Yes. But, or and rather, there's a lot of value beyond just um, how, to, how to learn how to use Devon Think. We show you in the starting up guide how each of Devon Think's basic features can be optimized for use in your workflow, that process of collecting, storing, and using the documents. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think probably um, the most valuable conversation that we have as part of the starting up guide is one about um, what we call schemas, basically how you create a hierarchy of information in your database. So we cover a lot of different options for how you can create a schema. Um, so, you know, we um, not only talk about like what the different options are, yes. um, but that quite often you're gonna be torn between using several. Yeah. And so we talk about different strategies for how um, to create a primary as well as secondary and sometimes even tertiary schemas um, to, to really um, make sure that all of your documents are in a place that is intuitive to find and easy to search for. Yes. So uh, we also, in the starting up guide, examine the historian's workflow, uh, particularly, um, you know, how to do processing up front to save yourself time later. I know a lot of us uh, kind of roll our eyes at the concept of return on investment, but this is very much uh, the, the correct uh, term to describe <laughs> really, um, I think, a major frustration for many qualitative researchers, right? That like they've done all of this upfront work, but it wasn't um, the right work or it wasn't very thoughtful. And now they're having to do work 
again, later. So we really hone in on what the essential um, upfront work should be in order to make sure that you don't have to do it again later. And you can spend your time later really just analyzing and writing. Yes, yes. And um, we also, uh, you know, have some additional tips and tricks uh, about how to use, for example, like flags and labels and some of the other um, little tools that Dub and Think offers. Um, so uh, it's, you know, I think a, a full complement of, of basics and also um, strategies particular to a, the qualitative researchers work. Um, sure. So that's the starting up guide. What's the super user guide? It is obviously taking <laughs> um, Devin Think a little bit further. Yeah, a step yes. further. Yes, so, yes, yes. Um, the super user guide is really where we break down a workflow that integrates Devin Think, um, a reference manager called Bookends, and then word processors. Uh, we look at Microsoft Word and Scrivener since those seem to be the two uh, most frequently used. Um, though we um, know that, you know, if you're using something like Melel, for example, this will also work. Right. Um, and uh, the combination of, of these three uh, tools uh, allows you to cite archival and some secondary sources more quickly and easily. Right, right. And as part of the super guide, super user guide, um, we get to share with you some super annotations that we've created, as well as some accompanying scripts for those super annotations that will help you facilitate the processing of documents. In particular, the scripts will do some tasks for you automatically, as we like to say, so to reduce your, your manual workload. Yes, exactly. And you can get a sense for that workflow in um, a blog post I wrote a few years ago um, during and after an archival trip to New Orleans. Uh, and we'll put the link to that in the description bar below. Yes, yes, yes. And beyond the content in, in the guides and the course that we've created, Abigail and I also provide one-on-one -on -one consultations with researchers that are tailored to their particular projects and their levels of expertise with Dev and Think. So during a paid consultation with us, we answer your pre-submitted questions and walk through potential solutions. And actually often for all these consultations, we've researched potential solutions for you. So you really get both of our brains from both of the uh, sides of our experience, my workflow optimization experience, Abigail's experience with her historical research applied to your project and your workflow to help you come up with the best way to use this great tool that is Dev and Think. So we would love for you to purchase the course, but beyond that, and I really truly believe more importantly than that, we want you to consider and to be mindful of your research process. Abigail mentioned earlier that you can have this return on investment if you spend a little bit of time up front before you start your project, thinking about where you wanna go and how you might want to organize yourself so that the process of collecting you, the documents, the process of organizing the documents, um, and then using it in your, in your final works will be as efficient as possible. And so, um, we really hope that this video gets you thinking about that. You know, how what, how are you using um, tools, including Dev and Think, in your research process? What is your research process? Do you have one? Um, and are you being as efficient and effective as you could be? So as you think about that, feel free to share a tip a thought or a question in the comments below. And if you are interested in an additional resource to help you along the way, we hope that you'd consider uh, the, the course that we created. And there's a link for you to learn more about that in the description as well. So mm -hmm. thanks so much for watching. Have a yeah, great day. We have to say the YouTuber thing. We have to say- Oh, yeah, 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 we need to be legit. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, subscribe, uh, like the video. I'm not gonna say turn on the notifications, but that is one of the other things that all of the legit YouTubers say <laughs> to you. So if you wanna do that, go ahead. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, um, we like to try, Sorry, we try to post a new video um, about once a month um, yes. or as uh, good ideas strike us. Okay. So um, if you subscribe, uh, then you'll be sure to find out. Uh, yes. About
uh, our newest uh, content. For really sure. learning a lot about YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so now I can say have a great day. Awesome. So again, and always have a great day. Um, and we hope to hear from you soon. Bye.